Well, here at Trinity, before we get into the sermon, for those of you that are guests with us, we have what's called a worldview segment. And the reason we do a worldview segment is we believe that we exist as a church. We're a spiritual crossroads. We're moral, cultural, social, political, economic issues intersect with biblical truth. And we base this on a verse of scripture out of 1 Chronicles 12, 32, where it says the sons of Issachar had wisdom regarding the times in which they lived and they knew what they should do. Today, Christians need to wake up. We need to discern the last days, the times in which we are in for two reasons. You need to be informed so that you could know how to pray, how to pray, how your prayers can be targeted specifically. So number one, you need to be informed to know how to pray so that number two, you personally can be empowered to act, to do something. This might be one of the most important worldview segments that I've done in, over the last couple of years. I wanna read a verse of scripture out of the book of Daniel chapter 11 and verse one. And here's what Daniel said. In the first year of Darius the Mede, I took my stand to support and protect him. Here's the prophet Daniel, one of the most important biblical figures in all of the Bible. Thousands of years ago, God had him strategically placed living in a pagan nation of Babylon, and he was placed there by God to bring influence to Darius the leader, the king, and the empire. Imagine today, if Daniel stood up and said, in the first year of Trump, the New Yorker, I took my stand to support and protect him. He would have been ran out of town. He would have been canceled. Imagine so many modern religious leaders today, they say, oh, oh, we don't get involved in politics. We just stick to the Lord's work. Seems like Daniel didn't get that memo. He was busy influencing kings and shaping empires. That really is the role of the church, the, the kingdom of God in action. Maybe uh, Daniel's copy of the guidebook of prophets who don't politic, maybe he left it in the lion's den when he was delivered. So here's the difference. There's a difference between a good man and God's man. Sometimes the man that God uses, like so many of us, we may not necessarily be perfect. Former President Donald Trump, he had our backs during his presidency on two key issues. Listen very carefully for those of you that are Christians. He had our back concerning the right to life. He was the most pro-life president we've ever had. And number two, his support of Israel. Because of that, I believe the church should have his back now. Like Daniel, I stand up today and I say, I take a stand to support and protect him. And if you don't know what's at stake, in a brief moment, I hope you hear my heart. Currently, President, former President Trump is the sole national figure defending the legacy of Western civilization, which has been deeply rooted in the Judeo-Christian values and ethic. He stands against a rising tide favoring a new world order that promotes anti-Christian, socialist, and permissive ideologies. This is what is at stake. Let's talk about his conviction. Since Donald Trump and his wife descended the escalator at Trump Towers on June 16th of 2015 to announce his candidacy for president of the United States, he has been the target of relentless opposition. Matter of fact, unprecedented, unprecedented scrutiny. There was the Russian collusion early on, proven to be a farce, and it damaged the credibility of the FBI. He was impeached twice. He was impeached December of 2019 because he spoke with the president of Ukraine asking him to investigate Joe Biden. The Senate acquitted him in 2020. The second impeachment followed the Capitol riots in January of 2021, uh, with charges of incitement of insurrection, again acquitted by the Senate in February of 2021. Since he's left office, he has faced continued investigations into his business practices in New York and potentially election interference in Georgia. He is the first president in the history of the United States to be convicted on felony charges. What were those felony charges? 34 instances of bookkeeping entries. The essence of the case against him is centered on whether his motivations were aimed at winning the 2016 election. From this they infer potential violations of federal and state campaign laws or tax regulations 
Importantly, it should be noted that no concrete evidence was presented because you have to prove intent. They did that with witnesses, about 18 different witnesses, many of them not credible, such as Stormy Daniels, porn star, Michael Cohen, his uh, former uh, uh, ex-attorney convicted felon. This is how this former president was convicted on 34 counts. We're not defending the morality behind the case, but the legality of the case. He was convicted with the help of a Democratic district attorney, Alvin Bragg, in Manhattan, whose campaign, Alvin Bragg, his campaign was funded by George Soros Soros, indirectly through a PAC. Consider the timing and the implications. They had these indictments for the last 30 months, but they only launched this trial during an election year. That raises great suspicion. His sentencing, he will be sentenced, Donald Trump will be sentenced on July 11th, four days before the Republican National Presidential Convention. That's not coincidental. There are conflicts of of interest throughout this entire uh, charade. So here are the major concerns. Number one, the politicization of the judicial system. This case will set a dangerous precedent where the judicial system is used as a weapon in political vendettas, undermining the trust and the credibility of our justice system. Number two, there's a chilling effect that this has had, this will have on public service. The prosecution of a former president for actions related to their duties while in office will deter individuals from public service. Only a billionaire businessman has the means to defend himself against the entire federal government that's been coming after him. And thirdly, it sets a precedent for future prosecutions. This case will establish a precedent where former presidents are routinely subjected to legal action post-presidency, eroding the traditional presidential immunity and and complicating the execution of their duties while in office for fear of future legal repercussions. The case against Trump is really a case against America. He is a symbol now. And it sends a stark warning to all future conservative politicians. You are at risk of being targeted and completely ruined personally, professionally, and financially if you don't toe the line. So I'm gonna ask today publicly for President Joe Biden to issue a full presidential pardon of Donald Trump for two reasons. Number one, national unity. Pardoning President Trump will help heal our nation's division, will help move past this contentious political battle, much like Ford pardoned Richard Nixon, aimed to help the nation move forward after the Watergate scandal. That's the reason number one. Reason number two that I'm asking President Biden to immediately issue a presidential pardon of Donald Trump is out of presidential courtesy. There should be a norm of professional courtesy where presidents pardon their predecessors for what reason? To protect the dignity of the office and acknowledge the pressures and decisions faced during their terms. Joe Biden is the 46th president of the United States of America. This July 4th, we will celebrate our 248th birthday. In the 248 years of the United States of America, we have only had 46 men that have served as presidents of the United States of America. It is an elite group of individuals. And I would be advocating the exact same thing if the tables were turned. I would be asking President Trump to issue a pardon of former President Joe Biden if the situation was similar. So President Biden, I plead with you to issue a full pardon of Donald Trump for the greater good of our country during this period of deep division. Mr. President, As a leader committed to fairness, surely you recognize the value of a fair political contest between you and Donald Trump this come this November. I'm asking you to do the right thing. I remember the scene, maybe you do, from the gladiator where Commodus wounds Maximus before the final battle, choosing deceit over honor. So I'm appealing to President Joe Biden to embody fairness and to extend this professional courtesy. Let us prioritize the unity and the healing of our nation by pardoning former President Donald Trump. But those of you that may be against Donald Trump, remember, even a wounded opponent can come back to defeat you.